I'm Zachary Carabell, Head of Global Strategy, and this is the January 2015 InvestNet Edge. Active management versus passive management. No, it may not have the immediate drama of oil prices dropping below $50 a barrel or what's the fate of the Eurozone going to be. But within the financial services industry and the wealth management space, there are a few debates that are more heated and more consequential than this ongoing debate between active management and passive management. Each side has its intense, ardent, and passionate proponents, kind of like Red Sox versus Yankees, Euro versus Dollar, David versus Goliath. It's one of these epic battles that is continually played and replayed with seemingly no end in sight. Some years, passive management is being touted as the way in which all investors should go, and there's certainly no end of financial commentary in the popular press about how the average investor should only go into passive, low-cost funds. On the flip side, you have Barron's cover of January 12th 2015, this past week, saying that active management is poised for a comeback. And so the debate goes on. The short answer to this ongoing conundrum is that it is neither one nor the other, and it should not be perceived as some sort of binary choice between should you be in passive funds or should you be in active funds. The end result, as we will show, really is a blend of the two opportunistically about where you can find the most alpha in terms of active management and the best cost where alpha is harder to find. The reality is there are some asset classes, and research has shown this and this table shows, where it is particularly challenging for active managers to do better than their underlying index. U.S. large cap equities have been one such space. Fewer than one-fifth of active managers over the past year were able to beat their index, and the numbers aren't much better on a three- and five-year period. For international and small cap equities, on the other hand, more managers, although still less than half, were able to beat their respective indices. That is one indication that there are some areas where it's just very crowded, where stocks are hard to differentiate or it's simply hard to add alpha, and that's been true in U.S. large cap and less true, but still true, in small cap and international. Fixed income is another universe where passive vehicles can do well, but at times don't capture the panoply of opportunities, given the, just the sheer scope of thousands upon thousands of fixed income instruments. Our view, and Investment has done some quantitative work on this, is that the blended strategy is the one ultimately most efficacious, that you should find areas where you believe that you can find alpha and go toward active managers in those areas. And in other areas where that's harder to find and where there are adequate passive strategies, passive strategies can work quite well. The fact is most of the research that is done in this space is carried out and paid for by proponents of their own particular asset management strategy. There's nothing inherently wrong with that fact, but it should be understood that much of the research one reads about this are either paid for by people who want to show that passive funds over time outperform because they themselves are in the business of distributing passive funds, or on the other side, active management, often demonstrated as being outperforming or adding long-term alpha, by managers who are themselves active managers. Again, nothing particularly wrong with that bias as long as it is, as it is recognized as such. Now, the, it is also true that there are some areas of regions and asset classes where it is simply hard to find an adequate and highly liquid underlying passive vehicle. Emerging market equities are so dispersed and cover so many regions that it is difficult to find a passive vehicle that captures them. Same thing with some emerging market debt. They, passive vehicles do exist, but they are not necessarily any more representative of the overall space than an active vehicle. And while it is true that a lot of active managers do underperform their underlying passive index, you pay for active management either because you believe it can add alpha to a passive portfolio or protect against downside, you know, protect against beta, or it could add beta. You, you pay for active management because you know or hope that it will either outperform and you fear but know that it could also underperform. What you don't want to do is pay for active management that is very close to a passive vehicle. In some strange way, it's better to pay for active management that underperforms than it is to pay for active management that performs perfectly in line with the index. Because in that scenario, you really do have to raise the question of why would you pay an active management fee to simply reproduce index performance that you could get for much lower cost. One final point in this is that 
It is an interesting question about what would happen, given so much more money has been flowing over the past years into passive vehicles, if we woke up tomorrow and everything was allocated to passive funds. In that scenario, there would be no movement of prices, and there, in that sense, would be no alpha except for fund flows. So when the argument about does passive do better than active, they are, in fact, twined together. Passive does better because often active does badly, not because passive in and of itself can magically generate returns. By itself, again, that magical scenario that won't happen, passive would generate no returns. Just something to think about when you think about the yin and the yang of passive versus active. So with that thought, we would continue to encourage a blended approach, a satellite approach, where you look for selective areas where you think you can have some alpha and active managers who can provide it, and areas where that, that can be more difficult to find and you can find adequate, liquid, low-cost vehicles. Those should be your passive approach. So something to think about at the beginning of 2015, and I am sure something we will continue to think about at the beginning of 2016 and for years to come.